Sports Show presents House of Rugby. Hello and you're all very welcome to House of Rugby. My name's Maurice Rassany Rule and I'm delighted to be joined on this week's show by Lindsay Peat and Pat McCarry. We had a break week from the Six Nations, but still plenty of URC action to look back on. How are we both doing? Not too bad now. Lindsay, you were in action yourself at the weekend. Another trophy to add to the pile. Yeah, <laughs> I like a win. <laughs> I would say, um, do you know what? Unexpectedly, uh, we went down to a Masters tournament, so I was guessing with a in team. In basketball, for those Sorry, who... in basketball, yes. Uh, a team called Mustangs for the, for, from Casabar. So, you know, it was, you know, double win. You like to help the Mayo people win trophies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They'll kill me for that. <laughs> uh, but look, it was actually stacked. I met a lot of ex-teammates and players I played against when I played National League. So uh, it was a fairly stacked tournament, but... Um, we actually came through the semi-final by um, sudden death free throws, would you believe? So it was very wow, exciting. Very dramatic. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, had Did a great you take weekend. One? Yeah, and I missed it. I oh. couldn't absolutely, I couldn't buy a basket pass. I had to Google how to score <laughs> in the hoop. So uh, yeah, it was a great weekend. Oh, well done, Pat. Thank have you. you won anything recently? Uh, oh no, and we were just we were talking about Manchester United there beforehand as well. So they mm. haven't won anything for a while as well. Yeah. So. Um, no, I was saying yeah to you before we started that it was my daughter's sixth birthday, so that was um, kept us going there over the yeah, weekend. Yeah, cake. The birthday and the build up, which went on for around <laughs> eleven and a half months beforehand. Like, of course. So, uh, yeah, it was a great day. Like, yeah. So, uh, and then she she was born during Storm Emma six years ago. Like, so uh, she thinks that she has snow powers, and she was claiming <laughs> that it was her that made it snow last Friday as well. So maybe it was. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But would you believe my son wished for snow for so long so he could get a day off school and then he went away on, oh. on Friday <laughs> to Galway who hadn't announced the snow. So he oh, was yes, absolutely yeah. distraught. Yeah, well, it was cold enough. We'll go out, get on to the games in a few minutes that were freezing that I was working at at the weekend. But first, Ulster Dragons, um, they started their life without Dan McFarland at the weekend in winning form. They won 49-26 against the Dragons, scoring seven tries. Performance aside, Pat, they need needed this result and they need this positivity yes thank god dragons are coming up um as well for them as well just a, a gimme um you know for for most sides coming up against dragons unless they played them away like but um yeah they they, they look pretty good um like again it's not perfect like they got uh, knocked over their own line a couple of times mauled over um but some of their tries were really good uh, a lot of offloading and uh will addison looking good and larry looking good so uh, a bit more positivity up there um and yeah, it's strange. I'm sure you guys probably covered it before, but strange to see a manager go halfway through a season mm-hmm. like so. Um, but yeah, maybe now's a good time. Like, I'd be interested to see how Richie Murphy goes. But um, yeah, a few positives for them, like in there, like and a lot of their kind of rugby look good, and maybe they're going back to some of their strengths as well, and maybe the shackles are off a little bit. So uh, yeah, long may it continue. They're still like they're still not too bad, like in terms of like league position That's as it. well. So. They, they they had lost six out of nine games. Um, in the competition before wow. now but they're still fifth in the URC and who knows this could be the result that sparks them into life It is but I, I mean if we look back historically they're still kind of at a similar around a 50 just over a 50% winning rate I think over the last kind of what 18 months and Dan McFarland always been there six years the, I think the highest he got him to was a URC semi-final mm. and that's not to be scoffed at because of the standard of the league but I think it just we're hoping I was definitely impressed them the weekend. I'm not going to take away. That's the Ulster we like to see, but it is about consistency and I'm just hoping it's not a placebo effect. It's not yeah. something about the Dragons. So they definitely look a team that were energised. Like, I mean, they scored in the first, I think it was four minutes, a lovely mm. kick. Um, little grubber from uh, Billy Burns to, to Addison, who was hugely impressive back uh, at 15. Lowry was on the wing and even this, this Lowry's first try, it went out the back. Uh, Addison got a bit of a momentum going uh, offloaded to McCann who you could just see him he was looking up two balls in hand did a switch line with Larry uh, John Cooney's on the outside Larry's on the inside on the switch and it was just a lovely try and it was just such enthusiasm and energy and even then you know Jacob Stockdale's coming off the bench and he's there possibly played all these offloads mm. for, for Larry second as well it was just they punched holes when they needed, they offload, they kept the ball alive and I thought they were hugely impressive and they looked like they enjoyed their rugby. Mm-hmm. Even like um, James Hume after uh, Nick Timney's try, he's going up to the crowd and he's you know punching the air and it's just something that was lovely to see but I just hope they kick on because yeah. I think the frustration has never been the standard that us can play but just to consistently put performances together. So um, look, 
congratulations to Dan McFarlane. You never see anyone like him to go, but something had to change. That, that's it, because he, he was the longest serving coach that Ulster have ever had. And as you said, he got them to a URC semi-final in mm. 2022. But looking at results from then on, they just they couldn't kick on from there. And he came into a sinking ship, really. Mm-hmm. And he really steadied things when he mm. came in. Um, but their results this season and, and last season as well, if we're looking back, just haven't been at the standard that you'd expect from Ulster. And that was their first bonus point win at home this season when yeah. you consider it's yeah. against the Dragons. So, as you said, you'd be hoping that they'd be able to kick on from here. And with Richie Murphy coming in, you know, who knows um, what freshness he might bring to the group. Yeah, and that's it. A, a lot of people will be like, it's it's going to be interesting to see what under twenties end up up there. Like, like you know, will he take a couple? I'm sure he probably will. And mm-hmm. like, I even think of someone like Keen Prendergast and Kilgallen, who's going to Munster now as well. Like the Connacht, because Nigel Carlin used to have that connection with the under twenties. He used to bring a few of them west, but now Ulster have that bit of an, an in then with some of those young players. Like, so if like Leinster or Munster don't snap a guy up they'll be heading north mm-hmm. I'd say as well so uh, but at the same time they do know they have to produce their own kind of talents which is why someone like McCann and Postletway playing so well at the weekend was really good for them um, Postletway's been someone who's been coming for a while like you've heard about him a few years out so great to see him mm-hmm. you know kind of get man of the match and all at the weekend as well and as you were talking about some some offload in there as well so uh, maybe the new Stuart McCloskey if he can kind of keep on, on that track mm-hmm. as well like so um, yeah there's a, there's a few positives for, and the, I, like I just love Addison as a player like so um, it, you know if this if this is real wood here in front of me I'm going to touch that and, and hopefully he stays fit like so uh, and that would be a big difference for him because I like Clary on the wing it's it's not a bad option is it? Yeah I think he yeah uh, he's just such quick feet quick turn of pace uh, he, he back with a smile on his face and he really enjoyed yeah, yeah. it and I think that's the thing if Ulster, if the Ulster man can get back and join their rugby yeah. on a consistent basis, I think they'll be big things. Like 49 points and a bonus point win is not yeah. to be, you know, scoffed at. And as I said, I'm just hoping it's not that placebo effect. You always get that with any sport and any new manager. Yeah. You know, there there will be this reaction. We want a long-term reaction. Great point by Pat, though. Two points. One, they were absolutely outmuscled by Dragons. And that's probably one side of their game mm. that has been a consistent theme anywhere in around their five metre line or from kind of the 22 in. Um, they've been susceptible to, to leak and tries. They need to mm. kind of look at that being a big option um, to just close that off. And then it'd be interesting to see would um, Kim Prendergast now be maybe tempted with Richie Murphy going up who he performed so well under with the under 20s and yeah. um, to kind of kick on his career because you're you know you're hoping that you don't want injury for anyone but I mean the 10 situation at Leinster is absolutely ridiculous how oh, do you Sam Prendergast you're talking sorry, about I thought you were stealing Keen. Keen from Connacht no <laughs> well he, how I can't get these right now is, is beyond me but um no Sam Prendergast to obviously with the 10 position now at, at Leinster but you don't want injuries to get him his opportunity but yeah. if he wants to kick on and try and challenge and if Billy Burns is going south as well yeah he's going to yeah, Munster yeah. so there is an opening there at 10 so I think it wouldn't be a bad move when I think someone you trust there as a coach and I think it might be an option mm-hmm. for Sam <laughs> to maybe look at. Well, we'll look at Munster now. I was in Cork on Friday night mm. and they faced Zebra and got the better of them 45 29. It was a very entertaining game, bloody freezing <laughs> down in Cork. Um, but they were against a struggling Zebra side. And as Graham Rowntree said, things that they'll want to improve on, but they played some scintillating rugby. Yeah, there's some lovely stuff there, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I was looking at Ronan Lockney there. He was on the sideline, which I was very jealous of his jacket, which I'm sure I could wear the same jacket and it would look half <laughs> as good on me anyway, but uh, he just has the frame to carry it off. You're a great don't hanger, Pat. Don't put yourself down, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I, might try, I might wear it next time. <laughs> if, I, if I'm invited back on, I might sit here in the big the Lockney jacket. But um, yeah, like Nankivell was brilliant again. I look, Just some of the clips even, you watched, um, watch it back and, and then even you see it kind of getting shared around social media. Like Snyman, having the crack out there like just yeah, he's a beast he, he looked he like an NBA and, player like, yeah. he looked like an NBA player like Hands, Shaq was like shovels yeah. yeah when Shaq was like the Lakers like all the rest of the team both his teammates and the opposition looked like small children and that's exactly yeah. what people looked like for, for Simon on, at the weekend he was just ridiculous but then it was times where he made that break and he, I was like just carried in and he tried yeah. too much and yeah, I was like yeah, no yeah. Um, but Munster were absolutely except it was a helter skelter game you it could really not was. I watched it I was like I actually can't take my eyes off the telly yeah, here because yeah, you yeah. just don't know what's going to happen here um, probably the only man who was probably really frustrated but he got his try in the in the end was uh, 
Shane there on the wing, he just, he, if it wasn't a knock on, it was something else and he eventually yeah. got it at yeah. the end. But uh, Munster played very well. Yeah, Zebra did manage to score four tries and three of the tries came from Munster mistakes. They had 21 mm. turnovers, five penalties in the last 15 minutes. It's similar in some ways to the Scarlet's result is that they got the job done, but they weren't, I suppose, ruthless enough. But do you put that down to the way that Munster played, that it's just part and parcel of it, that these mistakes are going to come because they play at such a high tempo and they play this free-flowing, offloading game? Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, maybe the, as as they get a bit more tired or like the lad isn't there to kind of like back them up or run the support line that the, the passes aren't going to hand because it was the same type of game they were playing all the way through but then Zebra just took advantage where maybe uh, maybe tired bodies or something that they were coming through and hacking the ball on or making an intercept as well so um, yeah there were, and you could even see at the end like uh, Kendallan was interviewed at the end of the match and uh, yeah, they they seemed upset, you know, even though they had walked, you know, the first 60 minutes of the game because they'd leaked a few late tries, they weren't too mm. happy. But yeah, lots to kind of, lots to build on there. Yeah, very kind of exciting games. You get down mm. to, um, was it Virgin Media Park now? Like, um, yeah, very exciting games. Like, and, and Ruin Quinn had a decent game as well, didn't he? I thought. And oh, God, his second try. Yeah. <laughs> That was a gift. I was yeah. like, I know it's snowing. I know it looks like it's winter, but it ain't Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I don't know who throws that out, like really long pass now I on know. your five meter line. I was like, this yeah. is just the little chinks in the Zebra armor. But on an all weather pitch now, it's it's a very quick game anyway. The only thing I was yeah looking at it was like the management of the game in the conditions. It looked pretty wet and windy. Did they need to be a bit more controlled? Yeah, I thought they could like it's like driving a car there's times where you've open road and you can just like really open up the throttle and let loose like Craig Casey I thought was a step above you'd really notice he was in camp like his uh, the try for like Frisch's try was excellent like Frisch's line back against the the grain as you say and Craig Casey just quick tap and go like he just wants to move it all the time which is great Mm -hmm. thought Sean O'Brien playing like obviously Mm -hmm. he was centre with Exeter last year now he's playing on the wing but he's a guy who's always looking and that's he still has that centre mentality where he's looking to make things happen but he can also cut a line down on the wing and, and really get the momentum building mm-hmm. and I thought he'd another excellent game yeah, he's really he's really settled yeah. yeah he settled into his, his Munster jersey, jersey very well I said Shane Daly was probably the only man who was frustrated <laughs> trying to get in on the action yeah. and then it was just um, not happening but yeah and Ruan Quinn to see young guys coming on that's it. All the young academy. guys yeah. look so comfortable when they're stepping up to this level in Munster because that's what they train. They're just they're happy to make the mistakes. They're happy to mm. try the offloads. Yeah, and I think this is the thing. Graham Roundtree has obviously given them license to play, but I think the only thing probably he will be was is twenty one tur- turnovers. It's just really you'll get away with it against the Zebras. You won't yeah. get away with it in playoff uh, situation when they go back to European competition. It just won't be, and that's where. The video reviews will be good though for them because the 21 er- like turnovers will bring great learnings and it'll be something to really work on mm. training and they'll be building towards then for the for the business end of the season, I suppose. So it's not a bad thing when you're still coming away and winning. It's an exciting way to win. It's an exciting product to yeah. look at for the for the spectators. It's lovely to, to bring it to Cork and, and have fans down there um, experience it. But I just think, yeah, it's just a probably one thing that will not get them over the line as we as the season goes on like there's eight games to go there'll be tougher opposition yeah. and I think just the game management side of things will have to be worked on however look all in all it was an ex- exceptional performance and win yeah it was a big night for Tony Butler and we mentioned mm. a few of the young players Alex Nankovell is stepping into the captaincy role very mm. naturally now and he looks so strong and so physical in, in his performance as well it was important for Butler that he had the experience and the calmness of Casey beside him how do you think he did because it's it's a it's a big time for him with Jack Crowley away yeah oh yeah he's um, he'd be happy with that like good kick and return as well and um yeah, like you're looking steady enough. And yeah, I'm sure someone like Casey having him back alongside him helped an awful lot because in those kind of terms, Casey's dictating the tempo rather than, than kind of Butler then as well. And he's just kind of um, adapting to that as well. But um, yeah, like we've talked about Billy Burns, that looks like it's, you know, apart from getting officially announced, it looks like it's a done deal. Like, But I still think with the amount that like Crowley is pretty much the Ireland 10 now. like So yeah. he's going to have limited time there as well, apart from maybe crunch time or European games so Butler is still going to be needed you know for next season so um, 
you know, whether it's off the bench or something like that for him. So it's just as long as he keeps steadily developing and, and getting those games. But this is going to be massive for him, like this period, like, you know, that, that he's just had. So, um, yeah, it all, it all kind of bodes well. Like, they'll, he'll stick around and then maybe he'll even be told that because you might get put off, like, you know, an experienced player coming in from another kind of province as well. But he'll be told that, like, listen, you know, you keep playing well and... Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Groundtree has shown that. Like, if you're performing, it doesn't mean if you're, like, a name that you're going to get your yeah. game. Like, so, um, yeah, he, he'll... Th- there's enough there to kind of show, like, let's like there could be promise for this guy next season. And then I think next season, again, you'd probably only see the real benefits of him kind of getting this kind of game time that he's yeah. getting. The confidence would be growing as well. So, yeah, th- it's all kind of positive enough. And it surprised me about Burns coming in, but then they probably just know that Crowley's you know, he's undoubtedly the number one like for Ireland yeah. now, so they just need that, that 10 back up as well. And and another point is the players that Munster have coming back in now as we look ahead to the end of the season mm. to have the likes of Mike Haley, Ordy Snyman, all these players that Mike have been Haley out. Mike Haley was brilliant. He was brilliant. Oh, God, he, he was, was on brilliant. fire. Yeah. I think Graham Rankery said afterwards his new hips are faster than his older <laughs> ones after his operation. Yeah, he said he was blowing <laughs> after the game. Obviously, he got man of the match and he spoke yeah, he very well. he scored two tries. Ah, but but to brilliant. have this experience around the younger players is huge for Munster. Looking at Mike Haley, if he gets a run of games together and is able to stay fit, could he be an Ireland prospect I mean I'd never say never like Andy Farrell is another guy who he doesn't stand on ceremony he doesn't stand on who you are like obviously we know how underrated Hugo Keenan in it is and you you don't know how valuable a player is until they're missing mm-hmm. um, now Kieran Frawley came in and he did a great job you know last weekend but if you had a run of injuries in the one position then you're kind of goose so to deepen the squad and for Mike Haley to continue he, he came up last season Pat you remember this yeah, on the show yeah. like we, we spoke so highly of him because he was central a central figure to, to how successful Munsters rebuilding was how successful they were in the UR how successful they were uh, for the URC win last year and he's just thankfully back after obviously a big long term injury to to kind of reignite that question mark over him so mm-hmm. I would never say never he definitely is someone who's been very very unlucky not to be called into an Ireland camp I think it's just unfortunate the position he plays yeah. Um, but yeah if he continues the way he is I don't see it um, he's probably an out, outsider at the moment yeah. um, but as I said you never know when injuries mm. when loss of form and you know he'd be ready to, to get a chance but he's certainly been unlucky so far yeah, uh, Connacht did what they needed to do against Scarlet at Dexcom Stadium. I'm still getting uh, my yes. head around that. Um, it finished 26-10. They were in complete control early on in this game. They had three tries on the board after 23 minutes, but it took them a long time to get that bonus point. They probably should have wrapped it up before the break, but it, all in all, it was an important win for Connacht. Yeah, it's a bit of a theme, wasn't it, the weekend? Like just the Irish sides kind of getting ahead and then letting sides back into it as well, but... Um, yeah like they, they kind of they started it was like it. I suppose if they could have put it away earlier like you know it would have been a lot better but it just turns into a bit of a dog fight then in the second half but um, but yeah they're good value like for their win like but yeah they'll probably be frustrated that like they you know they have the likes of like Muldoon and Fardy there now in, in the setup like they'd be kind of trying to drill home to those guys that like if you have a team on the rack just really kind of take advantage of it as well and um, you know to be kind of They'll be happy that they did get there in the end. I, I was saying we were we were looking at clips back there uh, today a bit of um, that late try that they got to kind of clinch it as well, like because yeah, it was Dennis um, Buckley's not knock on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and then some of the Scarlets players themselves were taking the social media to kind of like uh, quote tweet and stick in emojis and stuff like that, and you can kind of say how how is this missed with replays as well, but. Um, so yeah, that they'll be kind of upset, but the game was over at that stage anyway. Yeah. Like, there's nothing to kind of, um, you know, they, it's not like they can say they were kind of really hard done by. Um, even though Connick maybe a few fifty fifty calls, and I don't know, I'd call that an eighty twenty call that maybe they shouldn't have got. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Jansen with his interesting hair hairstyle, um, I'd like to get that explained. I wonder <laughs> if that is a bet that he's kind of that he's doing, or hopefully it's not a something personal to him and I've offended him now. But uh, he had a good game, and you <laughs> well, can't take it back now. <laughs> yeah. I'm not it could be edited out. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, it just I just kind of like as well to see with them how well Hanrahan has just slot in over the whole season. Like, yeah. you know, it's mm. there's no dramas with him really and he's, he's steady, isn't he? Like, so really helps though having the kind of the, the new surface to kind of play on there as well. But yeah, they'll be happy enough with that. And it's just interesting to see the the, four, the, well, the three provinces all converging in, in mid-table now and trying to, if, if any of them can kind of see if they can push and kick on to get into that top four 
uh, as, the se- as the weeks go on. Yeah, like it's so close in the table. Pete Wilkins was speaking afterwards about all the chances they left out there and he said it was more down to a lack of execution as opposed to a drop in intensity. So do you put that down to the kind of stop-start nature of the league at the moment? Yeah, possibly. Do you know, it's hard when players like I would have found it myself both being in camp, do you know, with Ireland and then coming back to club and, and then I'm on the other side now having like the players gone from club and it's not the same intensity. So you never know where you're at, you know, with test games, whether that's a break or you're coming into a new season. So I think but this isn't a thing as well. You can give them that excuse, but probably Connacht are guilty at times of not, like Pat said, mm. putting the you know, foot on the opposition's throat and finishing them off. So execution is something that is a theme there. They just need to find that killer instinct and just knock them off. Mm. Because I was very impressed with Jack Anger again. Yeah. Great yeah. break yeah. and pass for Kane and Blade. He had a lovely, lovely quick hands for um keen Prendergast try. Um and I just think some of their rugby is exceptional. Owned a butler got his first start and he was impressive. He scored he, a try. Yeah, he scored a try. So, you know, they're really coming good. They look like they're enjoying their rugby, but I just think, yeah, um, it's just now about finishing teams off and being yeah. being taking pride, I suppose, in in the chances you create. Do you know what I mean? And the positive thing is the cr- chances are being created. But think how good they can be and how good that scoreline is going to look when you can finish teams off. And then we're not sitting here, you know, yeah. you know, reminiscing over the tiny tears that Scarlets are. And I'd be in the mm. same position, do you know. But you don't want to come down that the gloss is taken off the wind by this, you know, decision that could have altered mm-hmm. the score. Do you know what I mean? So. Um, the new surface is certainly um, suiting them. The, you know the speed of game, the athlet- the athleticism of their players that they have there now, and uh, I think JJ Hanrahan is another lad who's brought great experience and another dynamic, depending on what style of ten they want to play. So. Yeah. yeah, they have seven games left now from now until the end of the season, three of them at home. So they have Lions, Zebra and Stormers and they really need to be targeting those home wins yeah. because it's so, so tight at the top of the table because there's only four points separating 10th and 4th at the moment. And although Connacht have won more games than Munster, they're still below them on the table because of the bonus points yeah, that Munster yeah. have had. So they should be targeting full, full like five points in those games, really. Yeah, that's a, yeah, but you named the first two teams as like win win and then Although Lions had a brilliant win at the yeah. weekend. Yeah, actually it's uh, maybe it's more historic that I'm just dismissing uh, Lions. It just depends on who they sent and and Stormers that's as well. They don't like, travel well. Yeah, like or, or like what what squad they send over like uh for that kind of game as well, but uh, yeah, actually, Lions. It's Sharks that are actually having a brutal season this year. But yeah, Lions are look okay. Like, but yeah, they definitely target those home games. Get your fours at least. Uh, for Zebra, like Zebra can, they're nearly every game they're playing, they're scoring four tries themselves, but they're leaking six or seven as well. So expect something like that again, and then. Uh, yeah, pick up as much as you can in the home games. And then, yeah, but try, as you said, get those bonus points. It's an important thing. Even, again, like, you know, talking about Zebra, like they're they're getting caned in a few games, but they're always picking up uh, either losing bonus points or, mm. or kind of try scoring bonus points as well. So, um, fair open play. Yeah, you, like, can't, yeah. you can't be loose against them. Yeah. No, they're, they're fullbacks exceptional and they're winger. Like they were two, obviously, men who really caused... Um, Monster. Uh, monster problems yeah. but where they're actually still naive is actually in the physicality so if like Munster were very good on their set piece especially their line out um, I think they might have only lost one so they were exceptional in that whereas Scarlet had kind of turned over a good few balls so like they're very good at set piece so if they can kind of control the game with JJ kicking for territory and getting them into good positions where they can maul Zebra and then again manage when they can split them open and when they can just yeah. really punch holes and then uh, get over the line that way but I see that being definitely a bonus point win and if they can get another bon- mm. bonus point against one of the South Africans because um, they really need to win four out of their last seven anyway minimum to give them a chance I think you're yeah, really. yeah I was only looking at the table there today and the Welsh sides are in um, rag order yeah, yeah they're just kind of um, it's all kind of falling apart for them. I kind of, I actually saw. I think the Times were reporting that Wasps were making a play to get into the URC if they came back as well, and um, they could take one of the Welsh sides' as place if they want. But uh, I, it'd be so interesting to watch what happens in the next while because if the Welsh sides, because it's the first year they're not protected from uh, one having at least one mm-hmm. Champions Cup place. Like so, if no Welsh sides get into the Champions Cup next season, yeah. you're. 
I don't know. Where's their revenue? Where's their, where are they going to attract players? Yeah, they'll be flipping the There's tables. There's a strategy again. coming from the WRU in the next two months, so it'll be interesting to see what they focus on. <laughs> just thinking, like the like the FAI getting a manager. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Just, yeah. just be patient. Yeah. Anyone want to take point, it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, on to Leinster like Connacht they raced into an early lead yeah. two tries after 10 minutes that game finished 33-20 against Cardiff um, they got the job done in the end were you impressed by them Lindsay? They were kind of fits and starts you know like uh, Jason Jenkins had a great block down um, same thing all the props were like I don't know what they were on, on at the weekend they were on fire Tom Clarkson took off and again he put Rob Russell through so it looked really easy Max Deegan scored his fifth try of the season a bit of a turn you know they were well able to punch holes their their physicality is definitely different like a lot of their second half tries were obviously scored by the props Michael Milner uh, scored um, John McKee scored um, so they're they're well able to bring that physicality but then on the flip side they were you know 15 unanswered points is not good enough Um Cardiff again had a great line out on the five metre and went to the back and just cut out all of the defend- Leinster defenders and again um, Reese Carey had two tries where he just bundled himself over mm-hmm. so yeah it's just a case of switching off but the gas thing is Leinster just still get the job done like it's still a great away win I know the wedge sides aren't great but you know when they decide to turn it on you know they're just well That's able it. and to when you think about it they're missing 19 internationals yeah. and they still manage to get the job done as Lindsay said and away from home and they're still sitting comfortably top of the league yeah yeah and yeah because they, they they were cruising at the start and then it looked like it was going to be because yeah you had Larmer getting um, yellow carded, yellow yellow carded, carded yeah. and then they're they're kind of losing then at half time and then but then that's what Leinster did as well it's like they got them back in the the dressing rooms so they refocused them and they didn't concede until Larmer came back and then mm. they put them away and then that maybe deflated um, them a little bit and then they kind of they, they pulled clear at the end as well but um, yeah another another kind of good challenge for them as well but yeah you're kind of saying it's good to see the likes of uh, like yeah Milne as well like who's been again like he's been spoken about like Clarkson has like yeah. you know these young lads who kind of like uh, maybe because Porter kind of burst through and Sheehan burst through as well. Like you're, you expect that of everybody. Like, yeah. but a few of these are kind of um, like more slowly maturing yeah. wines, and we might kind of see them uh, kind of break through. He had a but brilliant performance though, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Like um, coming off the bench to score through tries. Yeah, yeah. and he probably w- did go off the boil. Do you know? And I suppose again, you don't want to be negative about this because it's like they're young men getting their opportunity and they're taking it. That's the gas thing, you know, and it's 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 all right to switch off in games. Again, it's just what games you switch off and is it against better opposition where you can't you don't have the luxury yeah. of getting back in or they're not mm. as easy to score the tries or not as vulnerable as the Welsh sides who are going through an absolute terrible time and like very much lacking confidence, I'm sure, throughout uh, Welsh rugby from the bottom to the top. But um yeah, they're young men just taking their opportunities and there's huge squad rotation again with Leinster. Bit of a break. They have a lot of internationals out of all the provinces are probably highly affected even with their training environment, do you know? So it's, they have a lot more to juggle, but they're they're well able to get the job done. And yeah, it's yeah. good to see them. They haven't lost back. a game since New Year's Day. And we saw that day how Ulster were able to exploit mm, yes, the yeah, rush yeah. defence that Nina Barr has brought into Leinster. Have you seen progression when it comes to their defence or is it difficult to see at the moment because we're not seeing this run a game and run of... I suppose consistency when it comes to team selection as well with the amount of players that are missing. Yeah, a, li- a little bit like that. Yeah, you probably only start seeing it in, um, you know, when they all get back as well. But I'm sure he's been running it. Like it's almost like the weirdly enough when the Six Nations guys come back in, it'll just almost be like, well, we're up to speed now. Now you have to get up to speed with what we're doing as well. So um, yeah, it's it's hard to kind of fully tell how it's kind of working as well. But from from the talk you hear you're hearing from inside the camp so far is that. It is starting to click now, and 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 he is just his own personal influence is really kind of starting to grow as well. You you heard about this when he was down at Munster as well, but you're starting to hear that like he's really good on that one to one level as well, yeah. and kind of um and kind of giving people stuff and and opening people's eyes to other stuff as well. So it it is interesting to see how he has made such a positive impact so far. Whereas at the same time, I'm seeing Felix Jones. We might come on to that in the mm-hmm. the Six Nations talk as well, but they're already starting to crib about his kind of blitz defence that he's trying to bring into England then as well. So, um, but yeah, they're doing good. I've actually, I saw as well, is it Maloney is, might be going off the bat next season I as well. Like so, morning, yeah. And then that's what, what lends are real like that. You have someone like Deany then that can s- step in. Mm-hmm. Like, so they're, they're just, it, it's incredible what they do. Like even the likes of Russell and Turner who kind of don't get their look in with Ireland, but they're just so good whenever they play for, for Leinster then as well. There's Osborne, just, another player. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, amazing. Um, well, they'll be back in action. Yes, yeah, sorry. No, no. Lindsay. Yeah, Jamie Osborne, you forget about him, yeah, even yeah. though he, again, was, you know, he's exceptional. Like, yeah. he's just a talent. And, yeah, like we're talking about, you know, Mike Haley would get in, but there's so many players yeah. on the fringes. They just keep like, churning them out. Yeah, yeah, any other international team, like, they'd be probably like, uh, you, you don't need him, do you? We'll take him, <laughs> do you know? So, like, that's the luxury we have. But, yeah, it's a good luxury. You know, it's not a yeah. position we're used to being in over the last while, but it's lovely to see. And I was actually down in Kilkenny and past Kilkenny Rugby Club, and I, I thought there was a match on, but it was actually just young kids. And in my head, I was like, wow, rugby Kilkenny, really, yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. really is in a rich vein of form because yeah. of the success of it, because of these absolutely unbelievable role models. And the game is exciting now that, you know, World Rugby have looked at alterations to, you know, the breakdown, the cha- changes and making the game really, really quick. Um, so it's exciting to play and it's exciting yeah. to watch. But they were all, yeah, underage kids. And I mean, they were on two pitches just all spread out. Brilliant. So whether it was a blitz with another club, I don't know. But it was just like it was lovely to see, you know, and it's lovely that in that part where, yeah, you have a mixture of kids, you know, with hurls or the Eskimogi or hurling, <laughs> but they're they're well able to to mix it then with, with rugby as well. So, yeah. Well, we'll move on to the big one now, England, Ireland and Twickenham this weekend. Does it sit comfortably with you, Lindsay, that we're overwhelming favourites going into this game? Um, I'm not surprised. You know, I'm not surprised. I think this is a tricky one because uh, there's probably mixed emotion now floating around with this. Like, I I have played England. I have watched England. I think we would be disrespectful of England to not be able to put in a, a one performance, you know, on the back of their World Cup. Um, so I do think if Ireland play to the to the level they can play, this won't be an issue for us. This will be a win. Mm-hmm. We are by far the better team. But I think it's just if you get into a dogfight with them, they could really bring it down. And, and if they're within and, and we saw that in the last round of last year's Grand Slam, Do you know, they, mm. they really put it up to us. They really brought the physicality and um, they got off the line and made it difficult. They made it, you know, really made it awkward at our breakdown. So. You know, they're well able to play. They just haven't got their combinations right. Yeah. Are they going for a kicking game? But they don't play Freddie Stewart. Are they going to play a passing and quick game? But they haven't had Marcus Smith. Um, so it depends. But, you know, if it comes down to an arm wrestle and it's a bit of a dog fight, you w- just wouldn't want to get into it because then you're relying mm-hmm. on yep. luck or decisions going your way. But as I said, I don't really see it being an issue. But um, I just think going away to Twickenham is always a difficult place to yeah. be and they're under a lot of pressure themselves both Steve Borthwick the players if they can transfer their success at Europe but with what we can see these players do into that one performance into an England jersey they yeah. just haven't I don't know transferred it you yeah. know so no as I said I think it's there's mixed emotion I think there are a lot of people out there really, you know this is an exceptional Irish team Um but yeah, it's it's just not an easy place to go so yeah I'm not surprised does it sit comfortably yeah probably about 90% but it's still <laughs> you know I still wouldn't be so disrespectful in an international yeah. test game to just say it's an outright guarantee Pat we actually haven't spoken to you in a few weeks what have you made of Ireland's performances so far what has impressed you the most Um, yeah oh, again just how I think maybe it's the lads slotting in and it's almost seamless like that Um, like Calvin Nash like you know like it's someone like him even Frawley there who I thought was maybe in the second half of that game as well was probably Ireland's best like attacking player. Mm-hmm. Like he he kind of grew into that game as well. Like so, you're nearly everybody who's slotting in. Uh, like Baird came in, you know, to start a game did really well. Conan came in to start a game. So uh, just the, the lads who they just kind of plug into the system. There's so much confidence in what they do. Um, it's fantastic. Like so, so that's kind of that's the main thing. Um, has been really good. And then kind of yeah, they kind of it's a little bit weird. Like the last two home games have been, um kind of flat enough because like it's 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 a I suppose it's a thing for Irish people to kind of get used to being favourites and yeah. and even there like ahead of the Ireland Wales game Jamie Roberts said the Irish back row is the best back row in the world and your instinct is to go ah come on now like you know and <laughs> yeah, yeah. we're very Irish <laughs> yeah. oh my god you've jinxed us <laughs> yeah. what the hell are yeah, you doing and then just be like ah no come on and then you kind of looked into it and I, I was digging into it a little bit and it's it's really just it's the because I said Vermeulen's kind of retired now, so then he's out of that South African back row. So it's, um, it's really just Ireland and New Zealand. Probably you would say are the two best back rows in the world, and then it's kind of been fifty fifty. But then I I think where Ireland have the advantage there is, um, you have Conan and you have Baird now, and Ireland seems to be favouring the six two split now. So if you think that is like five lads there to like to cover your back row. It's, it is, and then you, it is funny like you kind of look at it in black and white. I was saying. World Rugby Player of the Year 2022, Van der Fleer, who's still class. Mm. Caelan Doris is probably going to be the next Lions captain. 
And then you have Peter O'Mahony who captained the Lions in 2017 and is still looking great as well. And he's like a line-out machine um, as well, like in defence and attack. So it, it's not that strange. And they're, they're such a complete unit then that it's not that strange going to do. So it, it's this weird thing we have to get used to. But um, And Farrell, like, Farrell doesn't do it from his point of view. Like If you talk all week, he'll talk England up. He'll say how great they are and... And he won't talk about disrespect on anybody, but yeah, it's 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 this weird seed now that's within us that we're <laughs> expecting to kind of beat these yeah. sides, and so it's a bit it's a bit strange that way. But I was speaking to Dylan Hartley there, who turned out to be a nice guy. They all turned out to be nice guys, like. But I was talking to him a couple of weeks I'm ago. Surprised you were. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't. Yeah, I was thinking of wearing an eye patch when I got on the Zoom with him, <laughs> being a, like a bastard, like. But um, yeah, he was really well spoken and kind of said um, he was just talking about how England had had red cards in the last. I think three of their last four games against Ireland. So I think I was talking to him about it and he just said, if they can keep 15 men on the, you know, <laughs> on the field, they have a chance. Like, so it is something to consider where they ruffled us last time we played them 100%. going for the, the Grand yeah. Slam. So they could do it again now. So th- they'll be looking to it. I wonder if they'll go back to the, the kind of World Cup tactic where they played Argentina where George Ford is dropping back for drop goals and they try and get well that's what I'm like, thinking yeah. you know I, I, like we, we spoke about this in the last show like the penalties aren't an issue until teams start hurting you with penalties or kicking for territory and, and that's where I think England could be mm. they're definitely more physical if they get in close and to Ireland our line and have conceded the most penalties out of any other team yeah. in the Six Nations so far at 37 and that's probably the only stat that they they don't sit comfortably on top of every other stat like attack and everything yeah. they're on top but the penalty count is certainly yeah like they're history makers they could go yeah. go win and if if it goes to plan like I mean bonus points in every bonus point wins in every round I don't think any team's done that it'll be a history maker with back to back grand slams and um, the most points obviously then scored and least probably conceded I would think um, yeah. they haven't no team had been held scoreless until we did with Italy so again these are I suppose it is uh, as I said like at times my own I'm ruthless you know and I would be competitive and I'm still competitive even though I don't play on that team but you know I'm like no we you know just destroy them and I suppose that's the expectancy now which is harsh on players who are still winning and yeah. winning well but I suppose there are times where George Ford is such a good kicker he's smart He's br- he brings something different he's not going to bring that open style but this is the tactic that got him through to a semi-final mm. where they were just um, putting teams under pressure winning penalties or getting into position for drop goals and they were just chipping away and that's where I'm like right if they really make a like a shit of our breakdown if they really like Wales did a good job and kind of slowing us keeping, yes, yeah, yeah. keeping their defensive line good there was huge clarity around that uh, but on the flip side Ireland have huge clarity whereas actually that's probably the one thing we would say about England they don't have clarity yeah. at times as to wh- who they are what's their identity what's their role playing and obviously Felix Jones when he gets it right with them which he will mm. and I mean you don't come into a new company as this that you're going to revolutionise and you have a week to do it I mean it's still going to take a time do you yeah. know but uh, when they get clarity around that they will cause teams problems we just hope that by next <laughs> weekend they won't have that clarity and they'll still be at sixes and sevens and if Ireland who are exceptional in open play can look to destroy them and exploit them like Scotland did so I think all in all we, we are favourites I absolutely have no doubt we're going to win but you know we want to go and beat the old enemy and beat them well How much is Twickenham a factor or does it come into play at all considering that Ireland have had success there in recent times? Does that kind of nullify the yeah. the hostile crowd? It used to, yeah, it used to almost after they won the World Cup in 2003, it used to almost play into Ireland's hands where like they wanted to go there and um, there's the famous story of like England used to have all their, I think they had 19 or 17 test victories in a row and it was on their, on the walk up the tunnel and when Ireland beat him in 2004, an Irish guy got a marker and writ on the wall, like with the result of the thing, like one of the Irish players did it. Like, and so they were that aware of this kind of like uh, the kind of history around them as well. But we're yeah. chasing that record now, are we not? With yeah. This, yeah. If we get this win, I think we, we set a new record. No, I could be wrong with that. Um, For most sure. consecutive wins. Oh, could maybe in the Six Nations. Yeah, yeah. it could be, yeah. Oh, yeah, in the yeah. Six Nations. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so there is that kind of thing. Where, yeah, now it kind of... But it, there is a side where if they get on top of you, like there is a, often a very good atmosphere there. Um, the, a lot of people drinking in the concourse beforehand. Like it's always 
it, it seems a bit larrier than um it's than like a village Viva. isn't yeah, it when you go yeah. like i've played there and like they are around it's like yeah it's like an olympic village so there's yeah. lots of people go early the streets are filled big tents all set yeah. up outside of where people all drinking beforehand so there's an awful lot of good atmosphere so yeah you can feel that kind of so vibe. If they get, yeah if they get on top of you yeah that's where it's can go against you like we're but yeah, I've been there a few times. Like when I remember Delan and Van der Fleer, that was twenty sixteen and mm. there was some poor game where Vuna Pola ran over Trimble and stuff like that. And um just when they get on top of you then like under any Jones when they were at their pump, like it was a tough place to go. But uh you could kind of see now that if Ireland can kind of do like, Joe Schmidt used to do it sometimes. I remember they won went won in the Grand Slam of like Ireland got off to what they love doing, those quick starts where they get ahead. Yeah then it can turn really turn against them when the pressure is on mm. England even more. So, uh, yeah, that first 20 minutes is going to be crucial. Yeah. How will both teams have used the break week now? Uh, it was probably no harm that Ireland had a bit of a dip in performance against Wales to have stuff to work on in the ahead of this game. Yeah, I think both teams will have used the week to really do get their teams like give them let them recoup which was a big thing I think the lads were off till the Wednesday came in for just two days and got the weekend off again so it was good for them to have downtime but I about, I think both teams will have a lot of video reviews to review their last performance where they were weak where they need improvements but they will be certainly now doing previews to where you know the, the opposition is weak so I can see England really looking at they, they've been most consistent with their selections other than injuries I think Alex Matthews didn't he um, well, Alex Mitchell, Mitchell and Marcus sorry. Smith are back, back in the squad. In. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Well, it'll be interesting what selection they go to, but he has been conservative by picking Ford at 10, um, mm. but yet wants to play this expansive rugby. So again, they have to pick their identity and they have to stick with it. And I think that's another point. Twickenham is a tough place to go. If you start off well, like we did against France, then the crowd go against them. And I think the English can be can mm. follow suit with that. You know, they are a crowd who are now looking for answers off mm. Bort- Borthwick and his team. Um, they're asking f- to back up, you know, action what you're telling us, but you're not doing it. So it'll be interesting to see. And at this stage, they have two big guns coming. They've obviously us and then they've France in the last round, if I'm correct. Yeah. So they need to put in performances um, to win that crowd back and kind of say, yeah, we're on a trajectory here that's going to bring us success because if they don't, um, I think heads could roll. <laughs> yeah, would the English support be more, I suppose, accepting of where England are at if they were to lose, but if they have shown signs of change? Oh, I don't know. I don't or think they if would. they go back to their re- reductive style of play that we saw at the World Cup and beat Ireland? Oh, they won. Yeah, no matter how they they win, they wouldn't mind. But yeah, if they lose and they, they play exciting rugby and they kind of because it was a little bit like that against Scotland, the result was all that really mattered to them. Like so, mm-hmm. um, yeah. There and as I said, there's already kind of seems to be leaks coming out from the camp about that there some of their players are concerned or it's got back to maybe agents or you know whoever else or maybe players are speaking directly as sources, but they're con- they're concerned that they're spending too much time focusing on defence rather than attack. And that's where they think it's all breaking down. For so are but they losing patience? Because I thought they had a bit of patience of what Felix Jones was trying to do, that it was clear what they are trying to implement in defence, but we're still unsure what they're trying to do in attack. Yeah, it's a little bit like that. So then maybe it's they're feeling a little bit of the heat. So then it's getting back that, well, we don't really spend that much time in attack. Okay. Like, you know, and that's where, whereas as you guys mentioned when, when Johnny was on the show last week as well, like what is it, 30-something handling errors against mm-hmm. Scotland? Like you can't equate for that kind of stuff as well. Like, but... Um, so maybe they're not uns- they're unsure about what they're doing apart from maybe in the first 10 or 15 minutes of a game where they know what the game plan is but then when it gets loose there's nobody really calling the yeah. shots for them then or like, you know like a, a sexton or something like that to kind of yeah. be an on-field leader and say here's what we're doing and, and kind of get them back on script as well so uh, yeah the English public it, it'll be just it'll be fascinating to see because they were slowly going in the right direction like Bortwick's very keen to stress that like we only have so many training sessions together like he um, but yeah, if it goes against them, like, and and if they lose to France, then as well, <laughs> yeah, it gets so nasty, like, yeah, because yeah. uh, and, and that's what even Johnny was kind of saying. He knows what it's like over there. It's like results are all that really matter. And does this always this um, aspirational goal, like me uh, taking a banana from the kitchen every day? I I, I may want to eat that banana, but I may go home and not eat the banana as well. That's, Look at that uh, for an analogy. Yeah, I call it my aspirational banana. Uh, England Excellent. England want Excellent. to play this brilliant rugby, but their own base instinct <laughs> is to kind of 
put it up the stick it up the guts and kind of. And it just said that that's the you. worst analogy he's ever heard in his life. <laughs> I was like, that's so abstract. I don't really get that. <laughs> I, I'm not really sure where you're going with the banana, but <laughs> there's a few possible edits for end here. I'm kind of having a look at them. <laughs> I think there's. I'm not sure that's aspiration. If there's a really like a large amount quantity in that bunch. You know what I mean? Maybe if there's only one from left. bananas. I kind of like I, I kind of because I'll take yeah. And I could no, I, I could expand on it, but maybe in we'll do like a kind of bonus episode <laughs> where I kind of expand on this. Listen, take banana. your votes now if you wish to hear more about the aspiration banana. Okay. I think it would be this is where you see I feel the pressure is on if it, like it would be all forgiving from English fans. See, if that's they what could I mean. Scalp if, if Ireland. Yes, Absolutely. Yeah. And this is where I think the pressure's on. I think they're going to go all guns blazing. Whatever squad they decide, if they think, right, we have to answer questions here. This is for the, you know, the red rose. This is what we want to do for this jersey and this people and show people we can still play rugby, that they will do it in the home of English rugby. Like, they still are a hugely proud nation. Like, they will not be happy though they're in transition. And I think it's really naive of people to think that you just are on the you're on the foundation of a new cycle. And I know this is like people are like, this is boring. It's not. You have to try things. You have to set out new stalls, but you can't just all of a sudden complete your attack and your defense. Yeah. If you focus on defense, that's great. <coughs> but what's the nature of your turnovers? Are you getting turnovers from knock ons? Are you win that source? Are you win and gain line? But they've um, won the most turnovers in the competition, but it's what they're doing exactly. with that ball. Exactly. So you can only tweak it. Do you know, are we like turnover possession where it's still live ball? Is it two passes and we're trying to attack the wings? What is your what is your attack policy yeah. off those turnovers? Are you kicking mm. for territory? That's where you might need your George Ford, to, who's a really good kicker. But if it's off live ball, then you want your Marcus Smith in open, open play, who's who's comfortable. Will you make changes? Do in you that see him making the changes that people are calling out for? They, they want to see Marcus Smith in there. They want to see Alex Mitchell I think Mitchell it's very unfair. Yeah, but I think it's very unfair now in round four with Marcus Smith not having played because the nature of Marcus Smith is when he's on, he's absolutely brilliant. But he can be a bit like Finn Russell where mm. if it's turnovers and you give it to this world-class Irish team and turnover ball in open play, then you're really leaving yourself exposed to that loss and re- some mm. really easy scores. So I can see them probably sticking to the squad more or less, okay. you know, and then if it really is he's a chance. He's played fullback before, hasn't he? Didn't we see him at fullback at Smith, times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the World Cup, but oh, they yeah. probably go with Furbank again. With yeah, Furbank, yeah. And then, yeah, Stu- it's mad to see Stewart kind of falling out of favour, like, but... Um, Which is bizarre. Yeah, isn't I mean. it? Like, <laughs> yeah, I think you it's could, bizarre. You could see, yeah, Smith probably go on the bench or something like that. And, and Mitchell, if they're both fit, I thought they were both out of the Six Nations when I heard about their injuries, but, like... Unless Mitchell was knee, wasn't it, after mm, the last round? Yeah, so like, but yeah, I could see Ford. I, I can't see him changing too much. I, like, it is, it's funny to see what's going on. Like, I saw, I think Andy Good was like, he wanted eight changes. Like, you know, like, I don't think it's going to be. Uh, Why would you eight change? It's not yeah. like it's, I can understand that there's nothing to play for. Like, two weeks ago, was talk of winning the championship. And now you're coming in, the, you know, two of the top four teams in the world do you know they're, they're your last two mm-hmm. rounds like I mean that's not you can't change at this stage you got to stick to the game plan that you've stuck with so far I would have Marcus Smith on mm. the bench and if it does open up and that's the style of game that it ends up being bring him off the bench but you have to stay in with Ireland because if we get the good start it, yeah. it, you know that's where they're going to be on the back foot but if they can stay conservative and stay with Ireland for a certain a period of time then bring on this exciting Marcus Smith who's great footwork yeah. who has no inhibitions and could really open Ireland up I don't see it but you know you just don't know what way the game is going to go so yeah I don't see too many changes now to be honest they can't they can't really mm. at this stage Will Ireland make any tweaks to the way they've been attacking we know how effective their short passing game has been and how much pressure it puts defences under but will we see more of an attacking kicking game um, from Ireland to exploit that rush defence. Um, Andy Farrell was saying after the Welsh game that they were a bit passive at times in their attack. Well, the way you'd beat that blitz defence is really deep off your second line attack, which we can see. We have seen that in the way they set up or yes, absolutely kick into territory. So I suppose it depends who is. Um, we see a lot more box, box kicks is, you know, Crowley who's well able to get those kicks in. The little dinks that we saw from Frawley. So they're well able to play, but I think they have the most short passes of any team in the tournament. Yeah. So I think they'll mix it up and probably they'll have done their, their preview to see where they can exploit it. But I think you'll have a mix of a lot of things now. We'll see what's working for them. Um, and I think they'll have all options on really for them. But that blitz defence, yeah, I can see them using the. Why is it so hard for teams to defend against that short passing game? 
because you see you've no there's the, there's no air like the ball isn't long in the air time so if you see that I used to hate from especially in the women's game you'd see it because from 10 to if I was top of the ball the, the ball is in uh, in the air so long it just gives that uh, it buys the defence it suits the defence to come off the line because once the ball is in the air they can move so it suits them whereas the short passes they can't get that momentum so you're just punching holes and winning game mm. line and that's where it's really really key and I can see Ireland using that and really keeping England narrow because they've been exploited out wide do you know for that bliss defence no more than Leinster is it's it's really really quick but it's really really narrow so if it's played well and, and deep out the back punching holes in and get the ball out that second line of attack they can exploit them out wide and we've seen Calvin Nash when he's been called on and he might be in games he's really really quick he's he's really transferred that form from yeah. Munster into Ireland and he's had a great start for me he's been a great find this Six mm. Nations and I know he's one of the ones I will take credit that I wanted to see in the squad because he's been deserving like and yeah. he's been so consistent since um since he's just gotten consistent game time really team selection for Ireland a few decisions to be made um Hugo Keenan and Gary Ringrose are mm. back fit does Ringrose come back in or are we looking at Aki Henshaw again yeah and, I, I, and could Ringrose be a bench option like how is he going to play this um yeah I spoke to Ringrose was up last week doing uh me- media stuff um or PR stuff I should say and uh promoting milk and which is nature's sports Are you drink. Gonna, I heard. Okay. Have but, you another story about this? Uh, no, no. That's the <laughs> Do you drink milk when you eat your bananas? <laughs> um, yes, sometimes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he was kind of saying that he's 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 like looking just to get back in now. I would have maybe thought he, if he was going to come back in, he might come in against Wales. But he, he must have had a more serious injury than than was first kind of reported as well, because he said he he did a shoulder against Leicester, I think. And um, so it'd be interesting to see if he comes back in, especially with Henshaw. Like I doing so well I don't I don't see him coming back in but he did speak about how he'd play on the wing and like mm-hmm. nearly everybody is having to see that like if you want to get in Farrell's squad now you have to be versatile like even you saw McCluskey playing on the, the right wing there uh, in the last game so Ringrose is saying I'll play wherever I'm needed like you know I, I, can, I'll, I'll, I can cover if I'm needed because uh, Henshaw's doing so well so um, I I can I I'm, I can see them doing 6-2 again I can see Keenan coming back in I can see Frawley going back onto the bench uh, and then yeah, maybe Ringrose missing out like and um and hardly any other changes apart from that I'd say um so the, the same bench game. then Frawley and McCluskey, uh yeah Frawley back on the bench then yeah um for this one yeah and then Keenan back in the team so um, oh wait six two so then yeah you'd have to back up probably with Murray Murray yeah yeah so that, that that's just that's that's kind of my uh, so you'd have Murray and Frawley yeah Murray and Frawley yeah which would then kind of leave someone like Ringrose out as well like so it's. Um, that's just that's just kind of my sense from maybe here early in the week the way it might be but um, yeah that's it uh, the other bit I was going to say when you were talking about it was uh, I think you guys mentioned as well it'd be interesting to see because England are definitely going to be looking to get after Porter again I was thinking would would they get away would O'Mahony get away with the old elbow shove as well is that even no, I would don't. England be pointing that out to the refs as well ahead yeah. of that game yeah and I think like so we saw obviously Alex uh, um Ellis Genge, the last time we, we had a we had a poor performance in, in Twickenham and we lost, I'd say it's two years ago now, mm. was then we got an absolute whopping that they targeted the scrum and there was dark arts. And when you're on the back foot and obviously now Porter has been, you know, under the spotlight and he did he did exceptional yeah. against Wales. Um we probably didn't reap the rewards. We should have been rewarded a lot more at the at the scrum time, but um, I think they will look to probably target O'Mahony and give him a little bit of a poke. Uh, but the sense with I think they'll do the same with Porter, um, who obviously had like a, a Joe Marler moment the last day with Robin Boots and you know pushing <laughs> people and all the rest. So um, yeah, I can see them just trying to wind Ireland up. So it'll be a men- and this is the thing: it's just going to be the mental side of Ireland's game. It's not going to be about the performance or the preparation. It'll just be. Uh, what way they're going to try and just really mm-hmm. negate all the and look there's so many ways Ireland can play like we just said it there their passing game how wide they can set off uh, the short passes just chipping away kick for territory grubber kick over the top like there's so many options they have but it'll just be the referee the rub the green our breakdown will be key our set piece will be key like we cannot have line out like a told you will rob um uh Will 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 target like they will target yeah, our lineup. They often do that at Depp, yeah. Yeah, yeah, at Twickenham yeah. as well. Yeah. So um, how will this game play out? How do you see it going? Will Ireland have a comfortable win in the end? Do you think? 
Uh, I think, th- weirdly enough, I think it could be th- their closest game of um, the Six Nations, but I still think they could still win by over 10 points uh, if if they kind of um, get everything right. They're just, they're, they would surprise you. Like, they're just so mm. good. like that, that, And they're so ruthless as well in a way where, like, they they have something else that whatever on, like, message they're being told ahead of things, they're going out looking to create history here. It's not just get wins, like, so yeah. uh, they're being told that they're on the verge of something special. So um, I kind of think that they'll um, they'll be very much in uh, for this game. So it'd be interesting to see. I think the bench as well is so strong for Ireland that that could make a big difference for them, like the likes of, like, Healy and Murray and, and stuff like that coming on and, and make a big impact. Um, so, yeah, I, I think they'd probably win by 10 points. I think 6-2 is great. I agree with it. I think Ireland will absolutely switch mm-hmm. on and I think this could be probably their most consistent performance and I do think they'll win by 15 but as I said I, th- I think it won't be an easy 15 but 15 yeah definitely I will end on that positivity we'll leave it there for today's show my thanks to Lindsay and to Pat until next week from all of us here Sports Show presents House of Rugby.